Shipway, hello there. Hi. Sorry. I, no, no, I'm not talking to you, Alvin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it is stream time. It's Friday. Uh, I've been feeling under the weather, but I'm here anyway. Feeling a bit better now than I was before. Mm. Could be a combination of anything, really. Uh, I'm kind of working on something off camera, and I'm going to show you guys very shortly. But in case this is your first visit here, I'm Ben from Second Dynasty. I make 3D printable Starship designs for tabletop gaming. And we are in the process, of the process, rather, of yeah. completing a brand new shuttle. And I'm going to show you the cockpit of the shuttle now. So let me switch the Cameroonie over to the close-up and we'll see if we can get this thing to focus on the beauty that is the cockpit. So finally, I would say this ship is feature complete. Oh yeah! There's one or two things we need to improve and work upon. Uh, mm. And then I will grab the back end here. <laughs> <laughs> Calm yourself, Elvin. <laughs> It is a Friday, so he's very excited. Yes. He finally gets released for the weekend. Oh, oh, oh. oh my throat is not. Uh, he's wobbling this all together because I'm trying to do this on camera, so of course, not everything is going to go smoothly. Now, the clips I got in these uh, were before John said, Oh, I just clipped. I uh, print all my clips at uh, 0.16 millimeters, so there is a little bit to be done uh, for this. There's cryo tubes are missing, uh, but you can see that we have basic stuff inside the little rooms at the back. You've got your storage area. I still need to reprint a few parts. We'll look at that in a sec. Uh, and then, of course, I do need to print a whole bunch of proper clips that aren't as loose as the ones that I made at 0.2 millimeter on the uh, on the bamboo. But here is the shuttle in all its glory, and it looks fantastic. Uh, sorry, bumped the camera there. I think uh, the chairs are a bit off center. I only just stuck them in now with a bit of blue tack. So um, you can get a vague idea here. It's going to be even a tighter fit when it is all completely done. Get a complete airlock at the back. It will dock with a much larger ship we'll be putting out later on in the year. We may go back and make it lighting compatible or something. I don't know. I'm not promising anything at this point in time. But this is what we're launching on the 26th. Along with a brand new Soul Survivor miniature by Kai Shiniko. Long term sculptor partner. And I think the detail on this looks great. Uh, this is fully prototyped. I would, honestly, I think it's fully prototyped on the bamboo P1P. So, yeah. I love it. Mm. It's a sexy ship. So, yeah. Uh, let's switch back to my Miocene. And I will also switch back to, you know, having the chat on. So, there we go. Uh, I apologize. I think I might have accidentally hit something that will insert ads at some point. So, um, I didn't mean to do that, but hey, I guess it supports the channel. I don't know. I've had YouTube Red for like five or six years, so I don't notice them anyway. All right, how are we going in the chat? We've got Shergo, John, uh, Stosh I Am, Anders, Solo Spirit, Tamson, Eric. Thomas, Carbonhead, of course, Ooh. Shooting Star. <laughs> oh, uh, lovely uh, new new member, I guess, from the, uh, the update. And yeah, I can talk about the Mongoose license a bit now because it is signed. Um, and yeah, nice to see you guys and welcome Clive as well. So yeah, there are some lovely updates. I thought I would just have my Maya scene here. Uh, with the same kind of lighting as the render I had up front. I was going to take some photos, but I only, only just got that off the printer literally two minutes before we started. Um, so there are a couple of things we're going to work on today. Um, and 
there is in the links a link to the page uh, for Soul Survivor. We have about 432 people signed up so far. Um, the preview link again in the description. Use the one in the description if possible because it will tell us where you found us. Uh, and I did just post an update to uh, what you gonna call it. I'm trying to find it here. To the official Traveller Smallcraft campaign. Just stick this in here somewhere. We can get rid of my dashboard since you guys don't need to see behind the scenes. Uh, but yeah, we are now feature complete uh, from our Kickstarter back in... When was it? <laughs> I think it was September or October. Something like that. Yeah, because the cash came through when it was in Australia. So, yes. Um... And yeah, it does kind of look like the, the gig a little bit, Eric. Um, so, yeah, finally John got finished with the Instead uh, Smallcraft miniatures. They did take a bit longer than anticipated. Um, and But they did come out nicely, I think. I, in particular, like the Type R launch. So I think that's a subsidized merchant, if I'm not uh, incorrect. Um... And this sort of sits on the top at the back. It's a bit different. That's why I kind of like it. Um, it would have been a bit cool if this was like slightly larger and there's like a cockpit in there and like these are, you know, some docking ports. So I got Albin to render these. We've had a bit of a short week because of Easter, of course. Mm. Uh, and then I've also been stuck at home dog sitting uh, for a couple of days because my wife had some other activities. We again have the link here to the new shuttle and a link to this live stream of course so that more people can join us on a weekly basis and uh, John had some news about the shop for that where we had the physical print of prints of the small uh, craft and uh, the wonderful thing is he's going to be jacking up his prices around the 15th so if you get in right now irregardless of whether you had a previous order or not uh, you can now pick up um, anything from that campaign, and if you order in the next two weeks, you avoid the price hikes. It's only five to ten percent, but still, um, you know everything counts. The feedback we've gotten is phenomenal quality for FDM printing. Uh, it is definitely of a higher quality than I was expecting. It's better than what we can get here, even though John does occasionally, like once a year, <laughs> tune our printers when he turns up on our doorstep. <coughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing that again. Um, so I've only hinted at things here, but I like to keep things a little bit more interesting on the stream. So what, um, let's see, what was it? Shooting Star uh, suggested about the Traveller license. So Traveller this week came out with a new campaign the fifth frontier war um and there's going to be a whole bunch of supplements based on that basically a little bit earlier in the year uh, like a month or two back i got an email from mongoose uh saying that they would be taking over the traveler license for the remainder of its existence from far future enterprises i don't know all the details so uh, i'm not going to speculate on what that means although of course um Mark Miller is alive and well, there's nothing, nothing insofar as that's concerned. Um, but this has changed my license. So whilst it is a bit stricter in the approval process, I can't wing things as much. Um, it does now include all of Traveller, uh, including Mongoose, and we do have plans to tie things together. So we will be focusing this year uh, on character miniatures that are Traveller specific. Uh, it's quite easy to find generic stuff, but now we're talking about the kind of units you might want to see on a battlefield in a fifth war, frontier war campaign, perhaps. So, so Dani, Imperials, that's what we're looking into be announcing that fairly shortly in the next couple of weeks I'd imagine um, and yeah that is going to be what we're going to do for this year as well as some vehicles now we do have to go through the approval process for this 
but one of the side benefits is we are allowed to use Ongu's art to visualize things. So um, that both means for us, we're not going to have to do a whole heap of other extra work. Um, now, what we can actually design is more restricted by Mongoose. So we have to go through an approval process. So they're just the days of throwing up suggestions and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. Could be over. We can push things a little bit, but uh, we do need to get that in place before we can sort of go with it. So that will be our sort of mid-year campaign leading into my annual holidays. And then later on in the year, we'll be doing part two of the uh, Starship 6 Soul Survivor campaign, which will be the No Stromo ship that we've been talking about for weeks, months, and perhaps even years. Um, someone actually, no, it was Alvin mentioned that you know we, we have plans for miniatures for these campaigns, but no plans for aliens. And then I was just like, Yeah, imagine the hybrid from Alien Resurrection and stick Benjamin's head on it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So John, you've got some work cut out for you. Um, so yeah, here's the shuttle and what we're going to be working on today. So I just want to take you guys over um, what we need to start thinking about. Here is our sort of interior floor plan. Um, one thing with the cockpit, like I might want to just cut to... I just want to cut to a short... Uh, sorry, not a shortcut, a close-up camera. Again, so this is the actual detail in the cockpit for FDM. I think that's pretty good. You can see there, though, both the joysticks snapped off accidentally. I was just being a bit rough. Um, and then I realized, oh, but it's sort of alien themed. It, it doesn't have joysticks. It's all just buttons. There's no mice either. So um, I'll probably... Maybe put a keypad in or something instead, but I think I will just get rid of those joysticks, eh? Because they're a printing issue. Now, I'll show you how this works with the design itself. So, the cockpit now, let's sort of get this isolated. Looking lovely, I think, um, with some really cool detail. Uh, but of course, this would be a nightmare to paint as it is. So, actually, the these sections clip off as do the chairs so you can get in with your brush nice and easy get around here and then it clips into the forward section there um, so i did have to redesign a few parts these are the joysticks we'll remove i might just leave it as like a trackball um, and then we have all of these switches in various different poses so i i think that printed really well considering like the size of things and that's only 0.06 millimeters so let me switch back to the chat um you should have used a 0.2 millimeter nozzle mister i don't have one um maybe maybe when we uh get an another bamboo we could switch out the nozzle on the p1p or something i don't know um to get a bit more detail in those areas but yeah um, John will be selling prints of this shuttle, um, just as he has done for Traveller, the same sort of deal. Uh, so you'll be able to pick up this shuttle. The actual pricing for the STL files for the base shuttle, I actually want to keep really cheap. Um, I'm at a point where I'd really like to get some new backers in, and the price can make it attractive. So. Normally, I don't put up a level for just the product itself without any stretch goals or anything like that. We are going to do that this time. The price of the shuttle, despite it being a 13-inch build, is going to be 20 euros. Then the actual shuttle with all the stretch goals will probably put up for 30. And the all-in, I don't know exactly where it's going to be, but we do have this. Um, we do have plans. <laughs> Alvin and I have brainstormed a bit. And we're looking to sort of prepare the way for the larger ship. So we're trying to think about all the things that we need. We know we want to do a like a Soviet 
knockoff of a power loader. Um, we know that we want to do some weapons and tools. We know that we want to do some vehicles. If you imagine those sort of like different vehicles that they found that, that were in the Nostromo uh, cargo bay. Uh, yeah, physical is pretty expensive uh, indeed. So like a shuttle of this size, probably um, we're running uh, over a hundred dollars. Um, I think 120, 130, something like that is probably what you could expect. Uh, for all the components in there. So it, it isn't cheap, but then again, if you compare it to like Games Workshop, we're not gonna have resin prints for that because um, we need to keep things as light as possible. We're still using FDM machines. However, um, the quality looks great. Um, especially, FDM printing's improving phenomenally over mm. the last uh, five years. It's, it's gotten so good. Um, so that's the deal, that's what we can offer. Um, it is, you know, small scale. I think we only had like a hundred or so orders from the last one. So yeah, that's that's where we're at. And uh, we're going to have this cargo bay in here. I do need to export these parts. Sorry, I need to print these parts again, just so we get in this little rim. I need to design a lid to cover the cargo bay area. Um, and I need to work on finishing the cryo tubes. So I did test print a solid version, but my goal with this is to make it so that the lid can twist off like so. So you could actually put miniatures in there. So this is what we're going to work on for the next 40 minutes or so. Once people have uh, finished questioning me or whatnot, if there's any questions about what we're building. Um, so yeah. Um, that's where we are at. I'm going to kill the lighting in here because whilst it looks pretty, you can kind of see how much more responsive uh, Maya is without this. Um, I'm not 100% satisfied with the look of these just yet. I want to make it look cozier. So I was actually working on this bed section a little bit right before um, I popped on string. I'm just going to isolate these and um, I'm just going to put a little thing in there and I'm actually going to sort of make some more cushioned areas for for this thing. I'm just trying to select, actually I'll just select some vertices and then I'll deselect and I'm just going to manually move this just a tiny bit. So we're sort of like creating this coffin cradle like effect, right? to something, I think we could go even further, like something like this. So you'll be able to place your miniature in there, our new miniatures that we're going to, you know, base this off, um, will be designed specifically for this kind of environment. Uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna do some extrusions here to get the basic look going. Uh, so I will select up to here because we've got a different angle starting there. These aren't perfectly straight from memory. Uh, we'll see. I'm just doing some extrusions. Shergo says, I'm really, uh, sorry, I'm looking forward to the shuttle and looking forward to trying the new crow tubes in my Beowulf. Yes. I mean, uh, they will probably be a bit loose. Uh, but they should look good in there as well. And uh, Shergo's Beowulf looks fantastic, of course. Um, so I wonder why that was not aligned all the way over there. See, this is a straight line by the looks of things. This is not. Um, oh yeah, because I, I took took that off. In any, any case, it doesn't matter too much. But um, So yeah, we want to create these sort of cushioned areas. Now I'm going to need to customize this a bit, obviously. So. What I'm probably going to do is just get a bit cheeky here and I'm going to go like so. Oh, that's not working. Yeah, trying to get that line there, but I can't get it into the corner properly. Maybe if I move this. Why doesn't it want to snap? There we go. So we'll just get rid of those. I don't know, it looks, it looks a bit awkward. 
Um, but maybe I'll angle this too, so it's, you know, also at an angle. So, let's grab these. So yeah, we, we're kind of in that phase of planning what we want to have in the campaign. Just getting this generally as close as possible. And then what I'll do is um, select this line, move my pivot point back here. We'll just scale it down a bit so it's going to be even. And then what I'll actually do is grab these. Oops. There we go. We're just going to merge them and stick this in the corner there. So this will actually not be a cushioned area. It's just, um, I'll change the color, but you sort of, we want to create that feeling that it's a coffin. Uh, this was one of the, uh, I haven't seen the argument from Ridley Scott, but the Nostromo is meant to be like a character in Alien as well. And you can kind of hear this pulsing breathing in the ship, you know, the, Doorways and passages are meant to evoke, you know, a womb-like feel um, or a, a, a coffin-like feel. Like, the, if you look at the passages, they're kind of shaped in the shape of, like, a, a sci-fi 70s coffin uh, design. So, now we're just going to grab all of these panels. Whoops. All right, yeah, they're not all fully merged, so we, we might just merge these vertexes. And in this case, I haven't instanced anything because I just wanted to see how it looks as it was, as the flatbed. Now, the flatbed does have a kind of aesthetic appeal to it as well. I do kind of like it, but not enough that I'm like, okay, let's leave this in. Although, when I do these extrusions, I might feel differently. So, let's go grab all of these. Okay, that to me indicates that we had a slight issue where um, our merge didn't fully work. Uh, but what I'm just going to do now is I need to try and remember how I extruded this. And they, this might extrude through each other, but the slicer will fix it. So I think we go 0.2 and that should bring us... Huh. Sorry, we need to turn the divisions off. And we need to go 0.1 here, I think. Actually, that looks like it's not enough. So I must have gone 0 0.3, 0 0.15. That looks like it's lining up. See how this line here and that line there looks like it should kind of fit. And then um, we're kind of like basing this on where the extrusions on the slicer are going to look okay. I haven't really measured this out to make sure that it is exactly as it should be. So John probably will get frustrated with me. Um, but it looks like here we've done another extrusion, that's 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So let's go thickness, 0 0.1, then swap to offset, 0 0.1. And then the final one I'm gonna guess is a 0.1. Uh, thickness, which is going up in this instance. And then a 0.2 for the softness. So now we, we have this very vague sort of padding uh, and we can see we've got some trouble areas here. This one looks really good. This one, it's intersected through itself and the same here. So basically uh, what we can do to work on this is I'm just, I'm actually going to cut this in half by moving the pivot points. And this last one, I think we're actually going to, um, I think we're actually gonna take the top part off, like so, and then we might address this in the same way as the, the previous one. So it's not fully ideal, but a little bit flatter, just so that we're not getting all that conflict. Let's see. Um, I'd make a, a pun about a coffin corner kick, but not everyone remembers ancient American football. Or has that frame of reference at all. Mm -hmm. 
Um, John says you model a lot for how it looks in 3D instead of how it will print in FDM print. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the point. Yeah. I mean, it's always a compromise, isn't it? But um, one could also argue that we've been as successful as we have been because we do that. So um, maybe that's just a little too soft there. But yeah, just this, it, it feels a little rough at this point. I don't love it, but I do feel like we can refine this. So I'm going to stick a line through all of this. And the reason I'm going to do this is because we're not really getting that coffin shape. So what I might do is just manually going to grab these, making sure there's nothing else underneath. I don't think so. Um, I'm surprised this printed at all, but the print we did was pretty atrocious. I'm just going to pull this in just a tiny bit. Right? Then I'm going to go do the same thing here. Pull that in a tiny bit. And this one a tiny bit. And we're just getting a slightly more organic appearance. And then as we get back further to kind of change that coffin appearance, we're going to subtly start shifting this inwards. And the reason I put a line in is because we're going to get a little bit more of a curve as this occurs. So I'm just doing this by eye. I could have put it on a grid, but kind of overkill for what it is. So yeah, we're just sort of smoothing this out. So there is always a place for freehanding it. There we go. So it just creates a little bit more of an interesting shape. Um, and maybe these side pieces didn't really need to be quite as puffy as they are. <laughs> Alvin finds this humor humorous. Uh, and I think if we just move aside this old version and then we do our duplicate on this one. Um, let's see, I we'll need to center the pivot. I'm using shortcuts, by the way. You can access these in the menus if you are uh, familiar with Maya. Whoops, there I've actually changed the alignment of the pivot point. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to go Control Shift D, which creates an instance. Unfortunately, my instance um, is probably hard to see because it's under my face, uh, but it says scale minus one. We don't want that in this case, we want uh, Z minus one. So we're going to change that. There we go. So instancing creates this thing where if I need to adjust this pattern, for example, and I move on this side, it'll move it on the other side as well. That's all. So you have some potential uh, to make some interesting shapes. This is kind of sloped so that um, it forms a natural sort of pillow. Uh, I'll be giving this model to Kairi Shiniko to fix, uh, you know, the feet are meant to fit in a little bit. Um, we want to make sure the scale on the sole survivor is good. Uh, isn't it more of a casket appearance as opposed to a coffin? Sure. I, I mean... What's the difference? I guess the casket's like, more like the interior part of it. To me, yeah, those would be pretty interchangeable words. Mm. Sounds like the casket is a part of a coffin. It's a coffin! So I just want to see what this looks like. Closed, and then the thing here is going to be the hinge mechanism. But already, if I turn the lighting back on, kind of hard to see underneath because uh, of the way the glass is set up. But um, yeah, okay, that didn't really have the effect I wanted it to. The glass is very thick for a reason, that being that, you know, it's supposed to be printable. I think it's the equivalent of two layers. Um, but yeah, you should be able to sort of like see down into this sort of pattern. But I can already see that um, I really don't like the way that this turned out. 
And I think the trick to it is actually going to be that we try to narrow this a bit more the same way. Um, so I'm just going to move these a tad. We sort of end up with this tapering. Uh, it's not going to be ideal. We're going to have to move some things manually, I think. Um, get it sort of looking a bit more cushion like. And, um, you know, we could actually manipulate some of these vertex points just to give it a little bit more of an organic appearance. Um, for example, if we drew out these just a little, look a bit puffier. That sort of thing. Uh, this should print in the orientation it's in, so I'm not too worried about changing the shape right here. So, yeah, it's not it's not perfect. We want to avoid some of these weird shapes a little bit, um, like this. We probably want to even this out. But it's going to look better than it did. So it could also be this awkward angle. And again, like just making these changes by themselves isn't going to affect things too much. It's probably actually going to affect things more um, just looking in on it. So uh, I'm going to grab these as well. Here we need to be a bit more careful that we stick in the same orientation. So, yeah, not by any means perfect. I'm just gonna, oops, just gonna move this down a little. And here I'm changing the orientations of my pivots just a little. Um, I really don't like that curve look. So it, a part of this is just gonna be sort of scaling this all so that we lose some of this funkiness. So yeah, it doesn't have to be symmetrical is my point. It will automatically be symmetrical on the opposite side. Let's just change the, the shader here to standard surface one. It's our default Arnold shader. Um, and it should just look a little bit like, and I do mean a little bit, uh, better. Now this is mesh smoothing and that, so really the end result is probably going to look more like this in the slicer, but we're still working with plastics. It's going to soften up a bit. Not too worried. Uh, but I still want to... I still don't love this. And it feels a bit fat there, so I'm just going to grab these and just move it down a little, little bit just to sort of like make it stretch out a bit. And maybe I will add a line through here so we can do the same sort of customization. Just puffing it out a little bit. This is also overkill. Uh, let's see. Uh, the padding is very re reminiscent of some of the walls in the Nostromo, yes. I would say partially intentional, um, but even um, but the actual the actual cryo sleep, sleep tubes in Alien are a bit puffier. They almost look like a sort of I don't know, like the back of a chaise lounge. I totally mispronounce that anyway. I'm trying to be fancy with. French and stuff. I don't so, even know what it is. It's like a, a sofa, but missing some of the sides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's the kind of thing that ladies from the uh, oh. from the eighteen hundreds could uh, faint upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty. So yeah, just adjusting this a little bit. My plan was actually to get this over to John today. Um, I might 
put some work in tomorrow to, to get that happening because we want to send over some copies to Brian in the UK to paint up. Uh, Alvin will probably paint this one up along with Lisa Lot doing the interior. So we've got a painted version for the campaign. There's not too much time left, but the thing is, we just need to be live with enough material that we can give an impression of what we're trying to create here. Okay, this must be where we had that hole before. Um, so we'll have a bunch of renders representing what we're offering, and then we'll spend, you know, a month or two making those ideas printable. And then our plan is to sort of um, keep tribes updated with like we might do variants of things or that sort of thing but tribes should be taking a, a bit more of a shift towards um sort of more like the same sort of theme for this year so a bit more like alien i would say um a little bit more alien or alien isolation than um papsicle stuff for example um and I mean, that's also intentional. We've got Romulus coming out this year. Uh, I know a lot of people were excited to see some really old yes. designs making a reappearance. Hopefully it'll be both fresh and nostalgic at the mm. same time. Um, and hopefully it won't add more crazy like Prometheus and Covenant did. Um, although supposedly it is a not ignoring those films either so we shall see uh but there should be a bit of hype coming up this year so i'm hoping to sort of like ride on those coattails this is still a homage the the design is meant to look like it fits in that universe it's not designed to be straight out plagiarism um this is what i like to call using the design language. James, you want sent me a video. Of what? How to pronounce share in French. Oh, bugger off, John. <laughs> Your trip is cancelled. <laughs> Best of it, sir. Pardon. <laughs> Does he know that word, I wonder? Yeah, that's a word to learn in Swedish. Yeah. I think it's German anyway. Mm. Besser wisser. I think it's like the original word is uh, German. It's I like, would say so. Yeah. Uh, it should be like Master Smith, which is like uh, knife uh, smith. Okay. Hmm? Oh yes, of course it is, but isn't that a weird name for an aeroplane manufacturer? Maybe like... Yeah. Maybe the German word for propeller is like, knife related. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, delete the history here. So I like how this is starting to look. We do need to keep some things in mind. So how are we going to print this piece? How are we going to print this piece? Well, actually this is going to be all together. And how is it going to fit together? So, somewhere here, yeah, this is it. I just exported, actually we can, I'll get up a Prusa Slicer, I think. I, I prefer to use Prusa Slicer when it's um, preparing my meshes. 2.7.4, uh, we're not going to do that right now in any case, uh, but what I want to do is, like these were all the parts so far for the shuttle, There'll be a couple we need to actually delete. That needs deleting, that needs deleting, uh, that does. And the reason we do that too is so that poor John doesn't become too confused uh, for all the repeats and mistakes. Because uh, if we have older parts in here, he might import it in, into 3DO and whatnot. Um, yeah, the thing I like, the, there's two things I like about Prusa Slicer more than Bamboo's, uh, sorry, Orca Slicer. Um, one of them is, um, just, you know, the NetFab thing, I guess it's Windows Repair Algorithm now. Um, easy to a a attach, 
uh, exporting is easier here. If I go export as STL, it will default to the object that it already was. Whereas um, in some instances, I've seen Walker uh, Slicer revert to the scene or sorry, um, three MF name. It all depends if you've imported a three MF or not, uh, which can get annoying with the export. Um, and also, I think instancing and deleting here is much easier. So whilst you can easily, sorry, that was add instead of plus. Well, instancing here is just click on it for as many as you want and it kind of pops up. It'll be under my head, I think. Um, the real beautiful thing about uh, Prusa Slicer is they have just the garbage bin icon. Now, I might be missing that in Orca Slicer. I'm not sure, I do have that up as well. Uh, and actually, we should probably open uh, our last project. Oh, where did it go though? I can't remember. You know what? I'm going to get cheap here. Don't save the settings and then we'll just open Orca Slicer again. And I'm hoping it's going to suggest the one we had. Uh, there we go. No, best of this means no at all, Tom. Um, so yeah, these are parts I need to reprint. And we also have... Uh, the side section, sorry, these ones here, I want to redo as well. Um, don't know why Maya keeps doing that with shaders. So, yeah, um, we need to reprint these. Um, basically, we didn't have this pattern in there before. There also, you can kind of see here we had clip holes on that side. I want to get rid of that. I do kind of want to do this one as well, where we add uh, some patterning in here just to make that cargo space slightly more interesting um, and also even. Shoot, I missed it. What did you miss, Pulsifier? Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Clips and hinges here. I don't know, John, what do you reckon we should be using? I'm thinking like the joints that we used for hmm see now this this is a bit of a tricky thing this part or rather everything else except this is going to be printed flat as it is right now and I oh that's the reason I was going in with this okay this is the group delete let's add this back in so I, this time around I've really tried to think about painting and to make this as easy as possible for people that are painting the parts. Um, but if I go to Slice now, uh, you can kind of see that this object is a bit of a mess um, because the actual original mesh that we gave it is basically what we have in Maya now. So it's absolutely full of holes. So this has tried to do the filament on the outside of the dome and you can kind of see here that it's just it's kind of interpreted where it thinks the filling should be and it's not too wrong but if we actually take a close-up look of what the print turned out like um, I can switch cameras back to my close-up and we can take a look and you can kind of see the defects there if I can get this to focus there. It was there a second ago, come on. What do you need? There you go, look at those problems. Yeah, that's not nice. That won't work. Um, so, the long and short of it is, oh, I'm fuzzy. Um, the long and short of it is that we really want all the other parts to print flat like so. And we'll have to do some more adjustments for the pipes and that sort of thing. There were some overhangs here that didn't really work out the way I was hoping. Um, so here, for example, it's going to need some more support underneath. And we're going to cheat by putting in some little bits of machinery or whatnot. Um, could be fuse boxes. It could be like, a, I don't know, some kind of machinery or whatnot. It'll make the piece look more unique and... Uh, it will act as a sort of built-in support. That's the idea anyway. 
Uh, so we did want to have like all of these different pipes and things because it just looks more interesting. Um, but yeah, we we may also maybe expand the feet or whatnot underneath. I'm not entirely sure. So for an export that was full of the holes that you can see it's full of. So like that's open in there, it's open underneath. It did a reasonable job importing the pieces and sticking them together. But I don't want this piece to print flat like that. A, if you're printing it in FDM, um, it's not going to look as good in that orientation. Uh, and we're probably going to do these ones in resin so we can have a nice clear result. John's going to do some experimentation with PETG, see what he can achieve. Uh, but basically we want this to be in this orientation. Um, so there's a few things we need to consider for that. It's not ideal because there's not a whole heap of surface area here. Uh, so one end should probably, and it should actually print out, I guess, uh, this way because the bottom here is thicker. Uh, but we probably want to create something that will close uh, more properly over a larger surface area. So we've got, you know, this can stand up as is and the layers can be built in. It looks like it'll be about two lines thick. I think that's the way I designed it. Um, but we'll see. I'm sure John will have some adjustments to make. And, um, yeah, I think we are going to... We, we need to figure out what kind of joints we need there so that we can achieve that sort of opening effect we want to do because I actually this time around really want to fit the miniatures into the crow tubes um, and whilst yes you could put these in your Beowulf they probably won't fit as snugly um, and I don't know which direction either they would be in so we'll have to see I, I do have some of the older ones in this scene so um, if I turn on workshop here I think no, not workshop, it must be in uh, this one. Uh, we can kind of see some of the older files here. This was always solid. You can kind of see it still has the same DNA, in a sense. Barely notice that there's an issue here with the pattern. Uh, old school designs, not always great. Um, so let's turn that off again. And yeah, um, I'd be trying vertical along the walls. Well, oh, you mean to, to stack them? Yeah, you can certainly do that. Um, it just might need a holder or something. Um, so maybe in the future we could design like a cradle so it can stand up. Actually, that might not be the worst idea for something we could add as a stretch goal. So things like, I mean, the ship itself sits perfectly flat on the table. Um, it's just weighted perfectly so it's on the back end. Um, it doesn't need a landing gear to look good but we might do it as a stretch goal. Um, but the idea that this is a spaceship, a shuttle, a lifeboat, it's not really designed for shuttle purposes in that sense. It's got a limited FTL capability, but it's only meant to basically keep you alive. So there's not huge amounts of stores or anything. Oh, let's see. So yeah, we need to strike the balance between cool features and practical functioning. So I think one of the things we're going to need is a lip around the edge of this thing. Um, we need to close this off a little so that we can maybe, um, maybe the way to do this is to select this there, then select this over to there, and hopefully the bridging works. It did, I don't love it. Because it's at this weird angle. Ugh. Okay, maybe not. Maybe we'll do this manually. I don't know. But I, we need to basically get this to go in an arch from there. So, over there. I don't want to fill this in completely. 
because uh, this will be the face that the thing stands on, but we still want to be able to fit the feet of the miniature a bit deeper in, right? Uh, so we'll be closing off some of these parts. This is, yeah, I don't think this is going to be ready <laughs> tomorrow or even today. It's got quite a bit of work left on it. Um, not that it needs a huge amount of detailing. It's just that um, I want it to look really good. Um, and we, we kind of want to recreate that Sleeping Beauty scene right at the end of Alien with uh, these new sort of glass tubes. So uh, there's still yet to be named Soul Survivor. She's an engineer sort of unassuming. I guess in the Alien universe they don't really treat their engineers well. I, I'm not sure if it was Brett or Parker that's the engineer, but getting paid half a share for that role seems insane. I was saying that to Alvin earlier. Mm. Um, so I see, you know, Alien classically, like, if, if I looked at Macross I would say it has to have an intergalactic war, it has to have transforming mecha, and it has to have music, and it has to have uh, a love triangle. Those are generally the formulas. So if you look at Alien, it has to have an alien, has to have horror, um, and it also has to have a female uh, heroine. So we're going to be doing that. Um, and, you know, we're, I'm looking at that classic sort of look. Kai Shiniko's already sent some very, very rough versions of what that's going to look like, but it should be well and truly done by the time we actually launch. Uh, I don't know if we'll have... We should be able to print them by then, but I don't know that we'll be able to paint them. Uh, maybe we'll get cheeky and like print the miniatures at twice the size so we can easily paint them because we suck at painting. But, well, I'm sorry, that's disrespectful to Alban and Lisa Lott, but like, uh, compared to some of the painters we have worked with in the past, on that scale, uh, we're definitely not the strongest at painting miniatures. That is a fair assessment, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm really kind of liking the bed part. Why don't we... Uh, why did I have to turn on the sharp edges? I don't put the soft edges back on it. We'll look a bit wrong. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. We probably need to take like the bottom edges and sharpen them again so it doesn't look quite as bad as this, but yeah, you kind of get the impression. Uh, and I'm wondering actually, what would happen if we mesh smooth this? So if we had some control objects in there, uh, sorry, not control objects, but um, let's see, I want these to be merged. I want those to be merged, and I want those to be merged, just to be sure. So basically we just want to take all of these lines, but um, maybe there's an easier way to grab them. So if I just look along here, sorry, there. I only use the Maya version of the crease tool. This is something John's been bringing up lately. Um, so we just create a thicker line. And the crease tool is essentially a way of controlling how mesh smooths work. So you can kind of see it's already started changing. Now if we take some of these lines... Um, oh, okay, that's interesting. I think we might have to increase the geometry manually just a little. Uh, let's see. So if we increase these... We're still getting this ugly blobby thing, but I think a part of it is just that we need an extra line in the middle. That did quite a bit, right? So if we just add these extra lines here, we can kind of control how this looks. And I think we'll end up with a better result. I don't know though. Maybe we don't want the creases everywhere. Maybe we only want them in the horizontal lines. Like right now we're adding horizontal lines. So this is kind of like what it looks like without any support. And that's what it looks like with. So I don't know. I'm not sold on that look. 
I think we would need to add even more detail, like additional lines here already. And it's still not great. Oh, actually. Yeah, that might be the key here. Actually having a line running down, like, say, here. Then we're getting this more squarish result, which is kind of like what we're looking for. And, yeah, so that's just a way of kind of controlling how a mesh will smooth. Because we want certain lines to be straight, right? So I'm just grabbing some of the pertinent ones here. And if we just go back to our crease tool, middle mouse, drag, and you get these lines. Now, maybe this is a mistake because it's going to look less organic, but I think we are going to have to sort of add in even more geometry, even so. So, but we don't have to be too... too overzealous. So we're kind of just looking for that mesh smooth result that kind of looks more puffy. And we are kind of getting a little bit of deformation there. Like I like the look of that better. If we turn off our wireframe, see how that's looking now? And I mean, this probably won't turn up so much. Um, in FDM, but if you were to print this in resin, and we kind of have to future-proof things as well, so it's like, we, in the future, may have much better printers than what we have now, so we kind of have to keep that in mind when we're designing, because, uh, I mean, I've already re revised, like, two different ships, maybe three different ships, from back in the day that just didn't look good, like the Delta, we've done a new version of the Shuttle Alpha. But if we sort of like, you kind of have to strike this balance of figuring out what's worth doing now and what you could just go back to if you want to build upon it. And sometimes, like I used to do this all the time when I, I uh, still actively sketch things. I'd make a drawing and then I'd reach a point where I didn't like what I was working on. So I'd just actually leave that and start something new. And then one day uh, when I was feeling like I didn't have the inspiration for something new, I'd just peruse through my sketchbooks and I might find something I, I started doodling and go, oh, I've got an idea for this uh, and pick up from there. So it's kind of like the same sort of thing. So I work on it until I get to a point where I'm like, I'm not inspired by this anymore or I don't feel it's worth investing more time in this. Uh, I'm just going to actually grab all of these edges and turn off creasing uh, entirely and just see what we're left with. So now I've added enough geometry that we're, we're kind of controlling it with the geometry itself. And actually, I think this more organic shape looks correct. The only place I would add Actually, the, the best thing to do is just remove these polygons altogether to get this straight edge again. And um, we might want to take just the corners, uh, not down here, but on the edges here, and put the creases up there. So I'm just going to crease this corner and maybe this corner. And actually, that's probably all we need. So I'm going to turn off creasing again and just keep it to those to those corners because uh, we want to be following the geometry of here so that you know we've got those points where it sort of meets up and again um, yeah just like that maybe so we do have a little bit of variance we've got a little bit of control over where things go actually that doesn't matter we just really need to get to the point where this kind of shifts gears very subtle hard to see i think it's about there see how it's when i say subtle i mean subtle so we kind of want to get that to align to this it looks like it wasn't perfectly aligned anyway some gaps are okay you know i can work with this i feel so that looks a lot better let's turn off the wireframing 
and so we've got this nice cushiony sort of look and if we went ahead and did a mesh smooth so um, I'm actually going to duplicate this before I do the operation uh, move it over and I'm going to do a mesh smooth on this uh, sorry not a mesh smooth I'm going to convert the mesh smooth to polygons uh, so I just have my shortcut and you can see there that this is how those polygons looked uh, with the mesh smooth and if we want it to look nicer in Maya we just take these creases here and we turn off mesh smoothing uh, sorry not mesh smoothing um, we soften the edges sorry not soften we harden the edges there so you get that sort of definition of in between the cushions back so something like this I'm not going to do it for the whole object, I just want to see how it looks. And that's just a little bit more definement. Although, you know what? I really don't think we need it. I think it looks pretty good as is. Looks more organic that way. Like, the difference would be... Like, it's so subtle, it's not worth it. See? It's just a, a bit sharper there than it is there, but nothing that actually contributes to the design. To the design. So for now, I'm going to delete that. We will convert it into the softer stuff at the end. Um, I'll probably build a frame around that so it's its own thing. And yeah, I don't know. I, we didn't get too far today. Uh, I do have to wrap things up, unfortunately. Um, Uh, and yes, uh, those are interesting facts uh, that blasted Samoflange, actually all of the crew positions uh, were not assigned genders to begin with, so they could choose who would be the survivor. Um, and it was also deliberately set up so that you would assume Dallas is the one, but obviously, nope. So I'm going to save my scene, because good practice, I mean we do have the autosave on as well. Um, and I will return to this when I have a bit more time. Uh, right now, the wife awaits back at home. It's Friday. I hope you guys are going to have a wonderful weekend as well. Uh, we should be back next week. I don't see any issues with having a stream on the Friday itself. So I think I think we're doing quite well right now. I can't believe we're 14 weeks into 2024. Oh, yeah, insane. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. Come back, check out the links, and sign up for the Soul Survivor campaign on Kickstarter to be notified when we go live on April 26th, asterisk Australian time, which means technically, um, I wanted to release on Alien Day, but Alien Day is a Friday, so I'm gonna release it on the 25th, but when it's technically the 26th in Australia. <laughs> uh, so that we don't miss out on some key traffic on the Thursday, so yeah, that, that'll be the case. Um, it makes more business sense that way. Uh, but we should still be a little bit visible on that day. So, Have a wonderful weekend, guys, and I will see you next week. Bye, Bye guys.